Hi, my name is John Garfield. This is Releasing King's Newsletter. It's April 14th, 2014. I'm really excited about this newsletter. We're going to Poland at the end of May, and uh, I'm trying to capture uh, the message. We have an opportunity to speak into the seven mountains uh, in Poland, and uh, so I want to capture what God has given us to give uh, there. So this is it. Seven Kingdom Strategies. Um, God is pointing us toward revival, reformation, and kingdom right now, and he's inviting us to be more practical and more strategic. Waiting on God and prayer are good and essential, but the Lord is inviting us to implement our prayer in our lives and our cultures in practical ways. That's the message of the kingdom. As kings, we're responsible to bring revival and reformation into our cultures, and we need a strategy to do that, and that's what this is all about. We're here to change the world in a great way. Kings bring revival and reformation intentionally. We have the opportunity and the anointing to create the strategies that bring this kingdom on earth. Here's the concise summary of the strategy that links uh, prior articles on individual topics. Um, so what's unique about this whole thought process message? Kingdom strategies that impact nations are laid on the foundation of strategies in individual hearts. So there's a graphic in the newsletter. I want to encourage you to look that, at that. It's very helpful. We uh, structured this newsletter around the Lord's Prayer and uh, got a little roadmap to, to help you with that. Great verse from Proverbs 24, verse 6 from the Message Translation. Strategic planning is the key to warfare. Hello? <laughs> so number one, the Lord's Prayer starts out with our Father which art in heaven. I want to suggest that mentoring is one of the key ingredients of uh, what's going on right now. There's an apostolic ingredient in kingdom of having a father and becoming one. It's not about hierarchies and accountability. It's all about connecting hearts and nurturing the dreams that God wrote in those hearts. Leadership used to create servants, me holding you accountable for my agenda. But real leadership releases kings by helping people connect with what God wrote in their hearts and holding them accountable to make that dream come true. We are all motivated by our own dream. That's the nature of kings, and that's the way God designed us. You can't get around that. It's exciting, and it produces intentional graduations into kingdom destinies. Okay. Second one is, uh, how would be your name? Work, I want to suggest, is part of our worship. Worship is the deliberate act of setting aside time in God's presence to focus on Him alone in prayer, meditation, and singing His praise both corporately and devotionally. In addition, we're breaking through the dualism of separating sacred and secular, spiritual and natural. Our worship is in both spirit and truth. We're integrating our hearts to be holy and whole and holistic. Worship is more than just words. We are no longer just offering the sacrifice of our time and money and words and songs on Sundays. We are offering what God really desires. We're offering Him our lives as living sacrifices. Our work can bring us glory that we can offer to God. Our creativity, our industry, our fame, and our wealth can all be a reflection of God's glory on us. And we can offer it right back to Him as worship to God and ministry to, to men. Everyone, everything on earth glorifies God when it's fully developed, including you and I. If you hide your glory, you're robbing God of His glory. Allow yourself to be appreciated, celebrated, and seen. You are God's creation. You carry the Spirit of Jesus. Being who you are and fulfilling your dream is an aspect of worship. Our vocational work can be an expression of our heart and an act of worship that builds the kingdom and brings glory to God. Or it can be paying the bills and working for a job. <laughs> it can be bondage or it can be freedom. We choose. We are not just spending time in His presence. We are bringing His presence into our culture, into every mountain we work in. And we're using His prophetic anointing and the gifts of the Spirit in that same mountain of our vocation. We are stewards of His glory. This, the third one is, your, Thy kingdom come on earth. And I want to suggest that blessing nations is part of our job, part of our great commission. As believers, 
Our mandate is not just waiting for the rapture. We are here to bring his kingdom to bless nations and to make disciples of all nations. That's the Great Commission in Genesis 12 and Matthew 28. It's our job to fix what is broken in our culture and to be leaders in every mountain. Our Christian calling finds its fulfillment outside the four walls, inside one of those cultural mountains. That's where real ministry doors are opening. Discipling nations starts with me. Amen? <laughs> Thy will be done. I want to suggest that one of the aspects of kingdom is that God writes his laws on our hearts. The hallmark of kingdom is that God is promoting us from servants to friends. Servants just do what they are told from the outside, but friends share God's heart and they're motivated from within. We are finding the will of God inside the desires of our very own hearts and realizing that building the kingdom is a personal dream come true. This is the essence of the gospel of the kingdom. The, new, the good news is that good. So when we share that Jesus is building his kingdom, that we're invited to play a role, and that our vocation and business have a kingdom purpose, we find purpose for our lives and run toward it. Christians and pre-Christians have not heard this kingdom message, message before. Believers with permission from God to dream. It's amazing, and we're moving from pew to purpose. Amen? Let's talk about give us our daily bread. Let's, which, for me, uh, I understand that's the word of God, but I also understand it to mean wealth creation. Kingdom is moving us toward a better balance between spirituality and wisdom. Money is a tool that we use to build our dream, our ministry, and God's kingdom. There is a biblical connection between wisdom and the ability to create wealth. It's practical. This wisdom produces business plans and cash flow to count the cost before we enter the warfare. The challenge that each one of us faces in this hour is finding our vocational calling, one that creates wealth, ministers to people, and blesses our cities and nation in a way that builds the kingdom. Seeing the kingdom is one thing. Entering the kingdom is all about making something good happen in a spirit of wisdom and excellence. What does it feel like? It feels like love. Wisdom manifested in a man or woman is amazing, attractive, and wealth-creating. It pulls people toward God. Solomon is wisdom's example, and Proverbs is her book. Your assignment is to look in the mirror and realize that Solomon and all his glory and wisdom and wealth was not cared for more than you. We just have to ask in faith. God has given us a spirit of wisdom in this hour. So, um, let's talk about, you know, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Uh, by that, I mean breaking heart boundaries. Most of us have boundaries in our hearts that represent vows from our past, which have cemented into ceilings in our future. Changing the beliefs in our heart about our own identity and potential is a key step of inner healing before we can go to the next level. Our hearts have led us and keep us precisely in our current station of life. Want to know why you're in the, the, the exact situation you're in? It, it's exactly where your heart wants you to be. 90% uh, of everything we say and do comes right out of our hearts, and it's very resistant to change. Our hearts will let go of the safety of the old for the risk of the new, but we have to have a good reason. We let go of our brokenness and forgive when we really understand that we can trade up for our destiny and break the cycle of being stuck in our current level. The concept of inner healing used to be just about letting go and forgiveness. Now we understand that our hearts need to be lovingly invited into our kingdom destiny. That's a good reason to let go of the status quo and take the risk of change and break through your ceiling. We've seen this change occur in hearts, including our own hearts and we're very intentional about developing strategies of the heart. Psalm 147, verse 3, He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Hebrews 12, verse 15, See to it that no one comes short of the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springing up causes trouble, and by it many are defiled. Last one, deliver us from evil. Some versions say deliver us from the evil one. And I want to suggest that vision is the answer. Uh, the greatest deliverance from temptation comes from pulling the curtain back on the kingdom and being tempted 
by the good things God has for us. It doesn't make any sense to choose sin over kingdom. It's a non-profit situation. <laughs> God is the author of pleasure and joy and purpose in Psalm 1611. It has always been the goodness of God that draws us to repentance. Our hearts let go of the old when we get a taste of the new. It's an experience. I share the gospel of the kingdom by helping people get in touch with the desires that God has already placed in their hearts. It's an experience with the prophetic presence of God, and it changes lives. When we touch the kingdom purpose in the prophetic language of the heart, which is love, change happens and people choose Jesus and his kingdom. Even It's even true in corporations. We once judged uh, as evil, what we once judged as evil corporate empires now have a call from God and they are choosing Jesus. God has unveiled both personal heart plans and corporate heart plans. Um, Jeremiah 29 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. God has a plan for your cup to run over to bless other people. Amen. Jesus closes this uh, outline of strategic prayer with this reality. How much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? My greatest discovery and treasure is how much the presence of God is on this gospel of the kingdom. I'm always taken back by the prophetic anointing, anointing <clears throat> and the impact in the hearts of people, whether it's in a, uh, a room full of people at a conference or one-on-one -on -one over coffee. We really are touching another reformation, and you're invited. The Holy Spirit is present and powerful in the marketplace, in the mountain of your choosing. This strategy <clears throat> makes life a lot of fun. Okay, All right? This is not a sacrifice. I am having a party, <laughs> and I'm inviting you to join. Our hearts are engaged in something we enjoy that is also in the Father's heart. We make a difference in our communities and nations and we connect with hearts of people in an experience with love. Our cup runs over in the spirit and in the natural. God is inviting us to a kingdom lifestyle. It's have fun, make money, and love people. It's an experience of the heart, and he's given us a, a, the kingdom primer in how to do it. You're invited. Have a great week. Keep us in prayer for Poland. I put a video on Facebook about John Godson. He's a politician we'll be meeting with, member of parli parliament in the, in the, uh, the nation of Poland. And uh, we're really excited. Amen. God bless. Have a great week.